Hey guys, Penguin Recordings here, and today we shall be looking at the latest AAA title to hit the Linux platform, and that is Mad Max. Now a big thank you to Rajitha from Feral Interactive for providing me with a review copy, however I'll be using the purchased copy of my own here. So let's get to it then, shall we? So first up we're going to be looking at the loading times, which I thought was pretty cool. It loads faster on Ubuntu here. It takes up to three times longer to load on Windows. So I'm not sure what f Magic Feral did here, but they did, did a pretty bang up job here, as you can see. I, I don't know what they did, but it's magic, that's for sure. Absolutely amazing. Next up, we're taking a look at the CPU and RAM usage at 1080p max settings. We're seeing a higher CPU usage on Windows, but in comparison, we're seeing a higher RAM usage on Ubuntu, which I thought was pretty interesting to see. So looking at the graphics settings offered to us, it looks like Feral has done a very serious job of trying to bring us feature parity so we have everything that the Windows version has. But I must say that the presets have been set to lower on the Linux version. I believe Feral is trying to keep the performance up so if you want to keep the presets similar to Windows, you'll have to manually set them as I've done. So here we're just taking a quick look at image quality. There is a slight brightness to the Windows version, which I'm not too sure where that stems from. I'm not sure if it's because the gamma settings behave differently in the Windows version, or if it's because of ambient lighting. So now we come to the juicy part, and that is the side-by-side -side comparison. So on the left is Ubuntu 16.04, and on the right is Windows 10, both running at maxed out settings. Initially, we do see Ubuntu is able to gain a slightly higher frames per second on average compared to the Windows version. But as we'll shortly see in a moment though, the tables do turn quite a bit due to, I believe, the Linux NVIDIA driver and Feral's indirect X overhead. We'll see that the Windows version actually has the ability to go to a higher frame rate as we're seeing now, up to 188 just now. While the Linux version, I haven't been able to get past the 140, 150 range. That's the highest I've been able to get it to. Still, these are very solid numbers if we're remembering the past like Shadow of Mortar. This is an improvement. Still, I'd love to see it at closer performance parity. Hopefully in the future with Vulcan, we'll see that. Still, nonetheless, this is cool stuff to see right here. It makes me happy to see that we're getting this kind of quality performance. So as we've seen just now, the graphs will show us that we're getting a slightly less performance on average compared to the Windows version. The most notable thing to note here though is that the frame rate maximum is higher on the Windows version than it is on the Linux version, so something's happening there with the overhead. You'll also notice the minimum here on normal on Windows goes down really low. I'm not sure what's wrong with the normal settings on Windows. Every time I run it, it goes down really low and drops seriously. On 720p, we see a similar performance as the 1080p side when it's maxed out, so it's consistent. The performance seems to be linear across all settings and resolutions, except with normal settings. I'm not too sure what's wrong there. So as recommended by FastOS, we're going to be taking a quick look at test frame time here. And what this shows is two things. First, is that the Linux version has the ability to have smoother frame rates with lower milliseconds per frame. However, when it dips, it dips so seriously you will feel it in comparison to the Windows version. If those dips were removed, the Linux version could be considered smoother than the Windows version. A really cool thing to note is that save games are cross-platform. Play a little on Ubuntu, run it on Windows. Play a little on Windows and load it on Ubuntu and it's always there. I really, really appreciate this ability to have cross-platform saves. It makes the gaming experience so much more seamless, especially if you like to go and play games at your friends' houses or you want to show things off to your friends. They can continue on your computer and you can continue on theirs. Just to be absolutely sure I was testing everything out, I also gave my wireless controllers a go and here you can see the DualShock 4 working over Bluetooth directly with the game. It's literally plug and play. Once I've got the controller connected to Bluetooth, I can run the game no problem and the game even recognizes that it's a PlayStation 4 controller. Same thing with my 360 controller, literally plug and play. No third party software, no additional drivers, literally just plug and play. I absolutely love this. Alright, summary time! So it's great news to have Mad Max on Linux because it means that Warner Brothers still has some faith in our platform. Because when they cancelled Batman Arkham Knight, I was pretty worried that that would be the end of it and we'd see nothing anymore from them. But thanks to Feral Interactive, it looks like we are in good hands. 
Performance wise, it's still not exactly there. It's not one to one to what the Vin Windows version provides. But Feral Interactive does seem to be closing the gap. This is a much better release than the days of Shadow of Mordor. At the very least, we have feature parity, which means that all the functionality and graphics settings that are available on the Windows version are available on the Linux version as well. With a little extra on top via the Feral Launcher providing us with FPS smoothing. Looking towards the future, next year it looks like Feral Interactive will get their hands messy with Vulkan, so we do have a chance of future improvements with performance. So I've covered about as much as I can. If you want different perspectives on Mad Max Linux port, there are several videos that I can definitely recommend to you. We have JakeJW93's triple monitor video that showcases triple monitor gaming on Linux, which is pretty awesome. We have Airspeed MPH's comparison video, which does a benchmark on SteamOS and Windows. We have Linux Gamer's review of Mad Max. And we have Expander's no-nonsense, straight-to-the-point gameplay video. So check those out if you need a different perspective. I hope you found this video useful in one way or another, and thank you for watching.